On January 20th, 1993, William Jefferson Clinton became the 42nd President of the United States. At the time, most Americans were not aware of the extent of Clinton's criminal background, nor were they aware of the media blackout, which kept this information from the public. As State Attorney General and later Governor, Bill Clinton in 12 years achieved absolute control over the political, legal, and financial systems of Arkansas. As president, he would attempt to do the same with the nation by bringing members of his inner circle with him to Washington. The hijacking of America was underway, and its impact on future generations would be incalculable. Bill Clinton was born in Hope and, of course, raised in Hot Springs. They had open bawdy houses over there at the time, and they had open gambling at the time. But Clinton grew up in that, in that atmosphere, that different atmosphere of Hot Springs. If it felt good, you did it. He was selected to go to, to the National from Arkansas Boys Day to be a delegate to the National Boys Day. And while he was there, he was able to meet John Kennedy. And I'm sure that sparked an ambition uh, in this young man. And uh, he apparently has always had an exceptional, a keen mind, a keen intellect. And, and he has, uh, he early, evidently, uh, had tremendous ambition. He, he was gifted in so many ways. The truth is, he's one of the most charming men that I've ever met in my life. He has more energy than, than, than any ten people I've ever known. He was able to network himself into running for attorney general uh, virtually unopposed. And then he was able to take that position and catapulted himself into the governor's office two years later and started building his foundation. When you think about uh, Bill Clinton's aversion to the truth, you wonder uh, if this is because of the lackadaisical moral background that he's had in this area. Uh, he lied about Rhodes being a Rhodes Scholar. He never completed that and still said he was a Rhodes Scholar. He went to Moscow and did business with them uh, against the United States government, and he wasn't challenged by the press about that. In Arkansas, while he was governor, he said he balanced the budget 11 times. He never did it once. Also, he said he didn't raise taxes, and he raised taxes 126 times. He can accommodate any situation that comes up because he's not hemmed in with the truth. I've never felt that Clinton, consciously or unconsciously, was hemmed in with morality. I first met Bill Clinton in the mid to late 70s. He was an up-and-coming politician. Uh, there were a group of us, Jim Guy Tucker, uh, Bill Clinton, Sheffield Nelson, and myself and we kind of ran around and palled around with each other. It was from that point that I did a lot of projects for Bill from a marketing perspective. In 1988, I went to Bill and I said, I need uh, a job to kind of relax, mellow out. Bill Clinton and Betsy Wright, they suggested that I go to work for a place called the Arkansas Development Finance Authority. And they said my talents could really be used there. It was uh, the best kept secret in Arkansas. After about two weeks, I went to Wooten Epps and I said, Wooten, I think I've got enough background on this that we can start marketing it. Now, what is the criteria for loans? He said, whoever Bill wants to get a loan. To go back though, to that moment in time, I'd been there about a month and I realized that I was in the epicenter of what I'd always heard about all my life 
what most people have heard about is the machine. I was literally working, sitting in the middle of Bill Clinton's political machine. It was where he made payoffs, uh, where he repaid favors to people for campaign support. Uh, I was in an interesting seat, and I knew it. We had a board meeting. Um, in that particular board meeting, I was sitting at the end of the table. James Brannion, who was chairman of the board at that time, was sitting at the head of the table. James Brannion stood up in a public restaurant, and he hollered, at uh, the Beverly Enterprises guy, Bobby Stevens, and said, did you get the $50,000 campaign contribution from the client that, you, that you're introducing the loan for? He said, not yet. He said, well, then hold up the loan till we get it. I stood up, went up to James. I said, James, don't yell stuff like that. You don't need to be yelling it in a restaurant. That sounds real bad. He was just burly and arrogant. He said, who cares? Bill Clinton sold the concept of ADFA to the people of Arkansas as a vehicle for creating jobs and assisting churches and schools. In reality, millions of taxpayer-guaranteed dollars were being channeled to Clinton's election campaigns, to his inner circle of friends, and to his wife Hillary's law firm. This may explain why ADFA had been drafted in such a manner as to keep its decision-making procedures secret. If you needed a million dollars, you had to get your application handled by the Rose Law Firm, pay them $50,000. There were five other companies in the state of Arkansas that were actually more qualified in bond structuring and applications, but Rose Law Firm got them all. I started checking around and I kept asking, well, you know, one thing's bothering me to the comptroller, Bill Wilson, you know, how do people make payments on these loans? He looked at me and said, they don't. He thought I knew. Well, that blew my mind. And this is about two months in and it was getting tough then. So I started gathering the documents. After everybody left, I would stick around as if I were working on the annual report. That would give me access to all the documents, and I made copies of them all. For about two months, I watched accounts accumulate money, and then the month they zero balanced. They're laundering drug money. There were a hundred million a month in cocaine coming in and out of Mena, Arkansas. They had a problem. They were doing so much money in cocaine, a hundred million. You, you create a problem in a little state like Arkansas. How do you clean $100 million a month? ADFA, until 1989, never banked in Arkansas. What they would do is they would ship the money down to Florida, a bank in Florida, which later would be connected to BCCI. They would ship money to a bank in Atlanta, Georgia, which, by the way, was later connected to BCCI. They'd ship to Citicorp in New York, which would send the money overseas. And there was an interesting one, a bank in Chicago. That bank, by the way, is partially owned by Dan Rostenkowski. Dan Lasseter would get the bonds. He would become the broker for the bonds. He would transfer money back to ADFA. He never sold a bond. The money then would leave ADFA go into one of the various banks for the specific bond loan and they would zero it out. When they zeroed it out, they were giving it back to Lester, unless they're handling fees. During the Lester investigation, we had numerous witnesses for the federal grand jury, uh, had extensive uh, testimony of people that were connected with Lester and drug use and everything else. Uh, his cocaine uh, use become used as a tool for sexual favors and also for uh, uh, business uh, uh, deals that influence people. Uh, and that's when uh, Mr. Uh, Lashley became quite flamboyant with his cocaine use and then ultimately uh, led to his uh, arrest and conviction. Dan Lasseter, who is the best friend of Bill Clinton, who went to jail with Roger Clinton for cocaine. And by the way, let me explain something. He didn't sell cocaine. They were giving it away. Huge piles of cocaine in his office. Ashtray upon ashtray full at the parties, and they would give it to young girls. 
That's sick. I mean, they were given a highly addictive drug to young girls. One particular one that comes to mind is a 14-year-old cheerleader uh, out of North Little Rock. Uh, she was uh, uh, a virgin, and ultimately he ended up uh, uh, sent her to a physician of his. Uh, the physician put her on birth control pills. Um, he used cocaine in order to, uh, to uh, ultimately she lost her virginity and she got addicted to cocaine. And the last I heard of her, when we had her subpoena back to the federal grand jury, uh, she was a hooker in Lake Tahoe. Dan Laster contracted to launder the money. And in addition to his contract to launder the money and the system that he and Bill Clinton had set up to do it, probably what he did is he took advantage of some of the cocaine. That's why he could give it away. Shoot, you have a hundred million a month in cocaine. They wouldn't care if you took a bucket full a day. After Laster was indicted, I started to uh, uh, receive quite a bit of harassment from from my own department, Arkansas State Police. And I knew the reason behind it because uh, the affiliation with the State Police and the governor's office uh, with Dan Laster and his uh, business associates. Mr. Lassiter's cocaine involvement at times was very heavy, then at times he was very cool, calm, mediocre. He didn't. He was, he was very careful, as all of them have been, for quite some time. Once he was convicted, he went to a minimum security prison, a holiday hotel, we call them. He spent, I think it was six to eight months, and he got out. Unbeknownst to anybody, Bill Clinton, the day after he got out, granted him a full and complete pardon. So if you think he's tough on crime, think about a man that pardons a man that gives cocaine to kids. Fear of violence is robbing our children of their future. We must take away that fear and give them hope. We must give Alicia and all our children back their childhood. Working together, we can. Do something now. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Your president, the president of the United States, not only was a part of a system that was laundering millions of cocaine dollars, your president signed off on it. He can't deny that he did. You see, because there's one little catch. Every loan that ADPA made, Bill Clinton himself had to sign off on it. More than Bill Clinton, you better identify the people in the loop of the drug running. You better identify the people in the loop for money laundering. And what you'll find there is those people go straight to Washington. Act 1062, if you look at it, it says that ADPA was developed and created to provide low-interest bond loans for churches, schools, colleges. So now look what happened to our legislature. They voted on a bill creating ADPA, thinking that they were getting money to colleges and schools to buy books and so forth. What better way to run thousands of tens of millions of dollars, launder it, clean it up, and used the cover of a state agency to do it. The first loan made at ADFA was made to Parkometer, a company called Parkometer. Seth Ward was the owner. As I started looking, I found out that the secretary treasurer was Webb Hubble. Then I found out Webb Hubble was Seth Ward's son-in-law. Guess who drafted the legislation creating Act 1062? which created the Arkansas Development Finance Authority, Webb Hubble. Guess who introduced the legislation to our legislators and got it passed through our house? Webb Hubble. Guess who got the first loan? Webb Hubble. Imagine this. Guess who did the audit and the evaluation of the application? Rose Law Firm. You guessed it. Who signed it? Webb Hubble. Hillary Clinton. It's not about justice, it's not about agenda, it's not about mobilizing people, it's about dialing for corporate dollars. These two parties have sold the U.S. government and the American people to the highest bidders.